Hello and welcome back to the channel, heart friends and fellow students of the great mystery. I'm Lily Rose and today I'm here with a very special guest, Elijah Rowan. <laughs> this is my son, Elijah, and today we are going to be offering a teaching uh, in sacred geometry and we're going to be talking about circles and we're going to be talking about the this episode like Sesame Street is brought to you by the letter E for Elijah and the number one one very good okay so Elijah um <coughs> we have been talking a little bit about sacred geometry right and we've been talking about how um how Mathematics in the Waldorf system is different than mathematics in public school, right? And because it's not as abstract and just computation and numbers, that it's that we try to relate it to patterns that we see in nature, right? Mm -hmm. And so I want you to think, the first thing I want you to think about is where you see circles in nature. Okay? I mean, I mean <clears throat> I'd probably say trees, Flash's nose. <laughs> trees right like so the rings of trees right yeah, like yeah. you can see each year they get a little bit older mm -hmm. right and, and, like they, and you see those rings like you can see them on your christmas tree we tried to count on our christmas uh -huh. tree right and uh, like four i think four i actually see even flashes like freckles where his whiskers come out like i can see circles there and his nose and his nose and his uh his eyes his eyes they're sort of they're sort of the oh cheeks. they actually they look really round right now when he looks like sad like that they're like a little more round but they're ovally right where else do you see circles um i see on your freckles circles <laughs> and like a mouth a mouth oh <laughs> Yeah, and we would say oh to do that, right? And your eardrum, right? Like are the e well the eardrum? I don't know. No, it's that... more of a like a pillar, like a cotton ball shape. Okay, but that there's a circle when I look mm -hmm. in your ear, right? Okay. Um, how about like um when you drop a, a rock or a stone mm -hmm. into water, you get like this. Cause... And a stone also is a circle. There you go. Yeah, rocks, and then also uh. Gumdrops are those, they're like those little pine cones with the spikes on them. Yeah, and like maybe sticker burrs. Sticker burrs, yeah. So there's a there's a there's lot a of lot circles of them, yeah. in nature. You know, more than we sort of would originally think, you know, when you start thinking about it, there's a lot of circles that show up in nature, right? And uh, also maybe kind of like the overall shape of like things, like, you know, like something planets like, like planets, like the stars, apparent, yeah, like the apparent shape of it, the apparent shape of planets and stars. Yeah. And even almost like from far away, the apparent shape of flowers and stuff, even mm -hmm. though when you look closer, it's like if, it, if you were doing a rough outline of, with a pencil and uh, the flower, you'd start with the circle. Yeah. The sometimes you even see like a circle and a circle and a circle and a, ch a small child will put a circle for the very middle, right? With the petals around it right even I me and my like not great drawing I do that too I like those kind of flowers um yeah so um I would okay so I was going to tell you a story about um in the 14th century so this is one of the books that we're using for our Waldorf homeschool lessons on geometry um and maybe in the end or in the show notes I can show you uh, a list of of all the ones that we've gathered for our lessons um you have like two bookshelf full of, <laughs> <laughs> of all the books, right? I know. But okay, so I was going to tell you a story though about um, about a pope in the 14th century, so like, or in the 12th century, so 1100s, right? Um, and back in those days, like right before the Renaissance, and especially during the Renaissance, the um, uh, 
there became like a, a, a trend of, of commissioning artists to do paintings in the temples. Like like at Tara Mandala. Oh, yeah. Remember? Uh, Lama Girme, mm -hmm. you know, he did all the paintings in, in the... In the uh, and the temple, right? Did he there paint the, all the walls too. Yes, there, are, and that's why he was there, like for years. But like the whole summer, he was there with his family, right? Because he was doing all the paintings. That that place was so beautifully mm. painted, right? Well, that was all painted in the Tibetan tradition. But in in back in in the Renaissance, remember we read the cathedral, mm -hmm. right? That book. Oh, that, that about, place. Yeah. About the yeah, and so then they ended up doing commissioning artists to do like fantastic paintings. Okay. So the Pope at one point in the 12th century was had a piece he wanted commissioned and or he had a new chapel or something and he needed art on the walls just like Lama Sultran did. And, uh, and so he sent out a call to artists and he said, send me a submission, a, a, like a sample of your art, okay? And there was this guy named Giato. Giato. He was Italian. Giato. His name was Giato. And he sent a submission and his, his, all he sent was like a freehand drawn circle. Okay, that was it. He didn't use a compass. Here, I have a compass here. He didn't use one of these. He just like showed freehand how he would drew a circle. That's hard. It is hard. It is hard. You ever tried to draw just a circle? Yeah, well, and yeah, I have. And it's hard. And like even these, like my compass doesn't work so great. Like my chalkboard compass is kind of, eh, the, 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 this part doesn't stick very well. And so it's hard, but yeah, my, so mine aren't even perfect, but his was really good, mm -hmm. but it's still pretty simple. Like he was a master of design and compo and like composition. And you know, like when you draw, you draw like those crosses for the face and you try yeah. to get the symmetry and stuff. Like he was like a master at that. And all he sent was a circle. Do you think he got the commission? Since we're talking about him, probably. Yeah. He did get the commission, but before, at, at the end of this presentation, I want you to be able to, like, my question to you is going to be, why do you think he got the commission? Yeah, there's probably, like, a deeper meaning, like, you, you always try to find the deeper meaning and stuff. Right, well, that's the Waldorf way, isn't it? <laughs> so, okay, yeah, so the next thing that I want you to do, okay, and this is going to be a little meditation, is that I want you to imagine that you are in a room okay and it's like a really vast warehouse and it's full of like vintage curiosities right like steampunk cool vintage curiosities like flea market style like all kinds of things that you could imagine or maybe even modern curiosities whatever your imagination wants but it's packed full of stuff okay but you can't see anything because it's absolutely pitch black and it's really, really vast. Like, it's a huge, huge place, okay? Like, square blocks, miles large, okay? And I hand you, and it's absolutely pitch black, but I hand you a candle, and I light it, okay? Now, what's going to happen? It's going to light a circle around the light. Yeah. Like, a certain amount of space around you is going to become illuminated right and probably circular mm -hmm. because you know, it's if, gonna, if you're on the if it's on the ground and there's nothing in the way then it'll be circular. yeah you're gonna ray out oh good point if there's nothing in the way god was, like, you're so Steve smart Hill i didn't even think feeling. about that but like yeah like if there's no shadow that gets created it's gonna create like a, a, a glow of light around you and then so you could inscribe a circle around that mm -hmm. right and then what are you going to probably do move walk around well walk around right okay i forgot to say you're glued to the seat oh. <laughs> but you're gonna look around right you're gonna start to look around and and inscribe the circle around you and create the the rotational movement around you right <clears throat> and that that act in a certain sense like is the act of creating a, of a circle right oh and that could have been like a like a compass back then like a, a circle then you draw the circle with the Flame. Right, I guess, yeah, but I was more just trying to like show you in your mind like mm -hmm. what it's like, right? Like, and so there are, th if, if I were to say there were three points that three things included in that circle, what would you think? What would you vote? Like, what would you think? Like, name Me. three, yeah, the center point, uh, the candle, and then the yeah, you, you at the center point with the candle, the ground, so the filling of it, the filling, what's in the middle, with the filling with the um. Well, that's what I was going up. for. Yeah, uh huh. And then the uh, the outer rim. The outer rim, exactly. So there's you in the center point. There's the outer rim, mm -hmm. and then there's the contents, like everything contents, that it's holding, right? 
So in a certain sense, like a circle whole encloses its own reality, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like what, a, it's kind of like, a, that's kind like of like the field. definition. Oh yeah, of a circle, right? Yeah, like a force field. Like Very force good. fields are always circular. So when we talk about the <clears throat> movement around a circle, right? That's kind of like a cycle. Right. And we think about a clock, right? A, a very simple, like clockwise, right? You imagine a clock, it goes around twice a day, but then you also have seconds, right? Seconds go around quickly, minutes go around faster. So there are cycles, right? Name, name some other cycles that you can think of. Washing machine cycle. Oh, yeah. I didn't even uh, think of that one. That one wasn't on my list. No, a wheel rolling. A wheel rolling. Right? <coughs> I was thinking more like a um, rock cycle. Yeah. You know? Uh, precipitation cycle yep water cycle that was on my list yeah. Yeah. um let's see uh plants from seed to seed mm -hmm. like it starts as a seed and then it goes back into a seed there's seasons um what else you got um years kind of but you said seasons. yeah that works though yeah i, I um, put astronomical cycles oh and yeah i was gonna say like um planets moving Planet, yep, yep, planets moving. And what about this one? Think about the Lion King. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the song? Uh -uh. The circle, oh, circle of life. <laughs> right? Yeah. So there's a certain little circle yeah. of life, right? Okay, so in every cycle, right? Like, okay, so think about a cycle that you can think of. Oh, and I was thinking about the circulation cycle of mm -hmm. blood, right? And breathing. And food. And food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hunger. That was one that was listed in the book. So... Like, think about breathing, though, okay? So in the cycle, there's, like, the in-breath, right? And the out-breath. So, like, every cycle, in a sense, has two parts like that. Like, it goes up and then comes down, right? Like, uh, like in the cycle of a seed cycle, it goes from seed to blossom, then back down to seed, right? So every cycle kind of has an up and a down. In that sense, it has a red shift and, and a, blue a blue shift, shift, right? So I taught you about red shift and blue shift when we were looking at this pencil because this is, what, how do you say that? Stadler. Stadler pencil. And we got a new one for Christmas. This is my favorite pencil. And it actually says red shift, blue shift, red, what doesn't it? It says like, what does it say? It says, um, oh, yeah. blue is at the small, at the, uh, the, soft the softest ink and, and red <coughs> is listed for the hardest, uh, ink or graphite or whatever. It's like if you're, it's like and I was like all tripping out you're like, oh my God, they're so smart. The Germans are so smart. Like that they would even put that on the pencil, right? Because that's really pretty smart. They're smart like that. Um, so, um, yeah, so I, when I drew this, right, like I drew a picture here. Do you know what this is a picture of? It's not the best drawing I've ever done, but oh, it was kind of hard to, oh, to draw. I got, is it one of those little things with the ball that drops down in it? Oh, no, it looks like that. It looks like, like a, a game, or a... right, with the star in the middle. No, but have you seen those starscapes, like, where you, like, look at the, like, a still picture where they, like, kind of, like, made a still of the night sky, the way yeah. it spins around and makes the star spinning, and, like, the North Pole star is in the middle, Polaris? Kind of. Yeah, there, there may be a picture, actually, in this book. Let's see. Um, but that's what it's supposed to Time. be. Yeah, right? They were saying how the middle, it is tied, and it's saying how the middle of the circle sort of draws you in. And so even advertisers kind of know. Oh, here we go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, let's show the. Kind of like starting, the, uh, what is that called? The one that they did in the Renaissance. I forgot the painting. Oh, right. The Vincent Van Gogh. Yeah, that looks Starry almost, night. Looks almost exactly like it without the buildings. Yeah, except for that. Yeah, and it does have some swirls in that too, but this is more just full circles. And that's a real picture of the night sky. Mm -hmm. That's Polaris. Well, I don't know. That's actually probably a drawing, but like, yeah. Okay, don't take me too literally. <laughs> but I meant like that's a real phenomenon, right, is this. But, you know, in this, that there's a red shift, which mm -hmm. is when it's coming closer to you, reaching the apex of the wave, and a blue shift when it's uh, moving further, you know, rarefication or moving further out. Oh, Flash needs to go out. Can you let him out? Cut. <laughs> okay, so um, then there's the thought that, so at the very center, it's still, right? The, the north, the pole star, we learned about circumpolar constellations, right? The very center, the pole star is still in the firmament, spins around it, right? And so the, you know, the ancients thought of this as a bindu or a seed, right? That the very center of the circle is the seed or the bindu. 
Um, it, you know, I can imagine that there might be a, a very still point, right? The center of your heart and the big circle moving around you, right? The Taurus field moving around you. And that's kind of like the red shift, blue shift, how it's softer is is like moving away so blue shift uh-huh and then harder is like coming closer so red shift it's like if someone's poking you uh-huh. and if they're moving further red away shift, it's, getting, blue it's, shift. Getting, it's getting softer if it goes away and harder if it comes closer right right oh that's right right very good very good okay so but where i was going with this is that that's considered to be a bendu or a seed in the center mm-hmm. You remember when we talked about Atum and the Egyptian creation myth, okay? And the idea, you probably don't remember, but it's okay, I'm going to remind you. That Atum was like before Ra, Mm -hmm. and that the idea was that he was out there and he was in the Nun, and he was just absorbed in his self, and that he like kind of like started awake and he kind of coughed, and by with that cough, he created a seed sound that created Shifu and Tefnut to, to people, right? Or two other deities, netters, they called them. But the idea is that um, that through this sound, the nun was like the vibrational waters, and that he made a sound, and that sound created a wave, right? And kind of like a ripple of concentric circles, it cre- started to create things, right? So here we have the center, and then we have the red like shift, ripple blue kind. shift. Yeah, like it's just, it's like, it, this is movement, right? It represents movement around, okay? It's kind of like if you drop a stone, then this exact area and it ripples out like water. Right. It's true. It's true. Like it ripples out, right? Yeah, but I mean, I think what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to communicate at this point, though, is that there's a center and then there's a cycle and it's movement and that the cycle's in two parts and it, it's like kind of coming in and going out and coming in and going out and it's a wave, right? And that this represents the movement of the wave of going out and coming back in towards the place of completion, right? It's like a completion of a cycle. And it's like moving away, but coming back to the one, right? It's kind of like a homecoming. Like in a, in a certain sense, a circle represents a homecoming, right? And it represents cycles. And we go around once, but we go around again and again and again, right? Mm-hmm. But it always comes back to the place where it started. It always comes back to the one, right? Mm-hmm. And that, um, so um, let's see, what else do I have here? Um, oh, I know that like when you ride your bike, right? It's a circle moving and it's got the spokes of the wheel. But when you're looking at a bike riding, do you see the spokes of the wheel? No, you just see the circle. Right. It all, it's like an illusion that just like blurs it all together. So it looks solid, right? It looks like it's, it's like a disc, like almost, right? And then they even put this, I know you love this because uh, I thought the camera turned off for a second, but it didn't. But um, I know you love this because you used to do this and it killed my head. But when you put the uh, water bottle in your, in your, um, spoke and it, then you would oh, ride yeah. remember that and it would make the sound does it did it sound like blah, 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 repeating or did it kind of sound like like well, it, both if you go slower but if right but if you go fast it's, enough it's a, it it like the se- it did, it's the same thing with our ears right so both our eyes and our ears can get tricked in that way because when you rode with that in there it sounded like one continuous sound not like blip 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 blip, blip. Excuse me, but true. If you rode slow enough, it was like blip, blip, blip. But uh, but if you're really riding down the street, it was like, brrr, you know, it was like a really loud sound. Well, that's because like both our eyes and our ears, our senses are tripped. If it's something's moving fast enough in a repetitive cycle, then it's like our, our, our perception gets tripped into thinking that it's solid. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. But and it's also kind of like a like a like an impressionist painting. Do you know what I'm talking about? Kind there, of. like that's like Monet, where he would do mm-hmm. like all those dots. Remember and it like and so when you're like look at it close up, like, or like when you're far enough away, like it looks like a semblance of a whole. But when you get all close, it, you so can it's tell like it's, it's a bunch like, of dots it's just a and bunch it looks of dots kind of blurry. I don't even see what it is, and then you step back and you're like. Oh, oh, right. Yeah, like, and that's how they paint it with all those little dots, right? So when that, that's, like, super hard to, to, to like, I imagine that to like was paint hard. up close and then step back. And then like, yeah, maybe they I, did I, that I, a lot. I'd just, like, a really long brush and be like. <laughs> <laughs> that's because you have Venus on your rising. You would, you, one, that would make you artistic, but also, like, it would make you come up with a good um, way to do it easily. Um So it's kind of like, uh, so what I was saying though, like what I was getting at is that like when you, um, that are, there are gaps 
that are imperceptible, right? Mm -hmm. In, oh, in yeah. cycles. But if you were to slow cycles down, right, that you would maybe be able to perceive some of those gaps in between. And that often in our experience that we get caught into thinking that things are really solid that are actually not quite as solid as we think they so like are. like an optical illusion. Right, like an optical illusion, but kind of in a deeper way, mm -hmm. right? Because like it's called reifying, where we reify our experience, which means that we have a tendency as humans to think of our experience as like being so solid. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is that it's, it's not as solid as all of that, like a particle on a wave. We see a picture of a particle, which is just a dot, right? Mm -hmm. But it's actually a snapshot moment of a wave. There's no particle actually there. There's just a snapshot moment of a wave. And so in this way, we sometimes get caught into thinking that our experience is like free, like it's, it's going to stop in that freeze frame moment, but it's actually more, uh, more pliable than that, like impermanence, right? Mm -hmm. Like the Buddha's topic of impermanence right? Like yeah. that things change. And so sometimes in our lives, like we get in these situations and we think things are so, um, we're stuck, mm -hmm. right? We're stuck and it's always going to be this way or, or it's like, it's fixed. Like I can't, nothing's going to change. You know, it's, it's always going to be that way, but we, we don't, we forget that, that even things that seem so thick, like and dense, like as a chalkboard are actually, well, it's cool, right? are actually not um, as thick as all that. Mm -hmm. Like it's kind of like, like reality is a cycle like this too. I don't know. So I just kind of wanted to, to bring that part up because it's like, um, yeah, the repeating cycles yeah, are, it. are always moving. Do you get that? Yeah. Well, that, that part's a little deep, but I just wanted to kind of, kind of go there for a minute because we can see that so clearly with the bicycle wheel, right? And the sound of the bicycle about how there's those gaps. And it's a cycle. The same cycle happening every second, every minute, every hour, every year, every, every day, every 10 month. years maybe, like a, 20 every a decade. A, what's a 20? Yeah, what's a 100 though? A, a Hecate. It's a Hecate. <laughs> Um, so I think I was going to ask you, so if, if we're talking about a circle here that has three parts and I was going to ask you, uh, uh, and tell you that it represents three signs and it's going to be the first three signs of the sine wave. And we've got one part, two part, three part. Tell me where Aries, Taurus, Aries, Taurus, <laughs> Gemini would go. <laughs> uh, it would probably be, Aries would be in the center. Right. Uh, Taurus would be the filling. Uh-huh. Well, not the filling, but the area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then <coughs> Gemini would be the outside of like the, like the, uh, the material like boundary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be the red shift, blue shift of the outside. Yeah, Very good. Um, so, like, just in summation, I think that we can say that a circle represents unity, right? It represents wholeness. There, you know, like you could divide a circle, but a circle is the whole enchilada, right? It inscribes the entire reality. You could get another circle and go bigger, but on the inside, it's just one, right? Mm -hmm. And that idea of a cycle that goes back around and comes back to where it began, right? So imagine that you're at the top of this circle and God, this is heaven, mm -hmm. right? Or whatever, right? I'm just going to talk in traditional terms. And God sends you out on a journey of life to learn right you take an incarnation or on the wheel of life and you come back around and, and when you get back you you know have a meeting with your higher self you're called in and you go in for another incarnation right until your learning improves and it improves right but every time you're coming back towards the one right and so with that in mind why do you think that Ghiato, ghiato italiano. With the good sauce. <laughs> With the good sauce, right? Very good. Um, I wonder how good his sauce is. Ghiato. You had a good circle, but how's your sauce? <laughs> Why do you think he got the commission by giving a circle? Because they, the church wanted a meaningful piece or a meaningful artist, kind of. 
Yeah. Right. And they wanted meaning behind it. Right. And Instead what, and of just materialistic. Very good. Yeah. And also, it's it, a, a circle, like, if there was only one, if a circle sort of represents the <coughs> one, and if there was only one, who would that one be? It would be the apple, wouldn't it? Well, good. That would very good, you little heterodox boy. But but from the perspective of the church, if there were only one, God, it would be God, right? It would be God. Um, I thought you meant who drew it. Well, yeah, no, but but it was funny the way you said it because uh, you know, sort of in the heterodox world, we recognize that we are going towards like going towards the one, going towards God, and kind of finding ourselves, and that we're kind of one with God in a way, right? But yes, from the church's perspective, that would be outside of you, and you would, this would be a representation of God. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do two activities today, drawing activities, that I just wanted to show the people on the camera. That um, <laughs> So I've got, uh, these are six circles, both of these are circles divided into six parts. And I, I don't think without doing it that you could tell me the answer to this. So we're going to actually do it. But there's something that these two... So these two drawings have in common. They have something very, they're absolutely fundamentally the same, but they move in a different direction. And so uh, one is, is, is the flower of life. And it's, it's sort of the, the circle moving outwards. And the other one is the pentagram and the hexagon. I mean, this, the six pointed star and the hexagon drawing. And you'll notice when you do it, that it, it's, it's moving inwards in focus. So one's moving out, whoa, and one's moving in. And so we're going to do those two drawings. Let's see if I, we can show them real quickly in the, in the curriculum. How to do it, how to do it. Um, the, I hope that the people that wrote this curriculum wouldn't be mad for me showing, but we're for the people who can't afford to do Waldorf always. So this was the first part of it, and this was the second part. <coughs> You know, it, it, you moved from this to this, and you'll figure it out. If you grab a compass, you'll figure it out. It's not that hard. And then um, the other one was this one. And so basically, uh, it all has to do with, um, if you look at this right here, it shows the A, B, C, D, E, F. And if you make those marks, you'll figure it out. In the, in the Flower of Life version, you can see them too. You see that those letters are the uh, are the center, like the what is it called? The center, the radius. I think it's. I mean the, the radius is the size. Yeah. What is the the apex? What is the very center called? I don't know. God, I'm such a great geometry teacher. Um, <laughs> cut. No, just kidding. Um, I, it's got to be something. It's like the apex or the. Apex Legends. <laughs> it's the Apex Legend. I love you, Elijah. I love you. Thanks. But I think that's all we have to say today. So with that being said, let's say the taglines. Do you know what they are? Let's do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's be like all boss. You short. Um, be kind. Be good family. Find the others. And play your... No. Oh, here we go. Bye. We love y'all. Bye.